Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chris Walton. I'm a performance psychologist. I'm based here in London, and my focus is on coaching and training groups and teams in resilience and mental fitness. And in the short time we have today, I want to show you something, in fact, teach you something, which is called the Gamma Brain Technique. And I want to show you what it is, why you might want to do it, and the benefits to you, uh, and how you can perhaps apply that into your mediation process. So, as Alice said, this is something completely different. I'm not a mediator. I have a private practice. I live here in London. I'm based in Fulham. So, very, very quick overview. What is the gamma brain technique? Well, firstly, gamma is a brainwave, a very specific type of brainwave, which I'm going to tell you a little bit about. But as an overview, what the gamma brain technique does is this. It creates a super focused mind. You have the ability to have penetrating focus and you improve your concentration improve your memory and improve your recall. Now all of those things are useful to all of us most of the time I would assume, but specifically when you're dealing with people. As I say, I'm not a mediator, but I do work one-to-one -one in private practice, so I know what that dynamic feels like, particularly when emotions start to brew and we have to create our own balance, our own coherency within our own mindset. It switches off your stress response. So the gamma brain technique turns that little emotional part of your brain that can fire up and get drawn into a story, it switches it off, allowing you to think clearly, and it improves your equanimity, your ability to be cool-headed, level-headed, balanced, and calm. So if you've ever been in a mediation and you've sort of started to feel overwhelmed, whether it be an online or face-to-face, -face, uh, in physical person, whether you've started to feel that overwhelm and you've, you've lost that concentration a little bit, which perhaps you may do, well, you've got hooked into the story and listen to the story a little bit more and perhaps lose your focus a little bit, lose your concentration, lose where you are in the process and start to feel perhaps a little bit more of a bias to, more, to one party than the other, which uh, from the mediators I've spoken to, this can happen and maybe it does to you at some stage. But perhaps if you've been a mediator a while, you can, you can sort of relate to these type of things and any really in human interaction. Particularly when things like strong emotions come up in a mediation, you know, you, you, you can feel perhaps when there's anger, when there's resentment, when there's tears, that really expression of emotion coming out, you know, you can sort of think to yourself, well, what do I say in that moment? You can have that little voice in your head. You sort of know logically what you should say, but actually you go blank. And there's just that little bit of a space where it's almost like your brain is shut off. So I'm going to tell you how to stop that completely eradicate that and get your mind, brain and body in a very coherent, optimal state for many things and for you and this conference it will be for mediation. So this is what the Gamma Brain Technique does. Uh, it's, it, says it has many, many applications but let's just use it in a mediation context right now. So very quickly, as I mentioned, gamma is a brainwave, and in a 24-hour cycle, we'll have four different types of brainwaves. And just to be very, very clear, all we mean by brainwaves is, is the activity of your brain cells firing at a given time. So as I am now, I'm thinking about my slides, I'm thinking about my time, I'm actually hungry, I'm very, very alert, I'm looking at you, I'm looking at the screens at the back, I'm very aware, I'm very alert, I'm very awake, and I'm very focused here. And this is what we call the beta wave, a, uh, excuse me, yes, a beta uh, brainwave. Now, most of us spend too long in beta all day long. We're in this on the go, particularly in this city, on the go all the time, completely pushing, trying, thinking, doing a lot of things. What have I got to do? When I pick the kids up, what's that meeting? We're constantly on the go. Now, if you can't switch off from beta, if you can't drop away from that beta wave, then you're sort of slowly but surely heading towards problems. And some of the suggestions are that when you have too much beta for too long, you start to move towards depression because your body can't relax. Now, when we slow down a little bit, we move into a little bit more of a calmer state, we become a little bit more relaxed and uh, a little bit more balanced, we slow down. The rhythms of the body slow down. The heartbeat slows down and the rhythms of the brain, the brain waves slow down. And that's what's called the alpha state. And alpha is a, a calm consciousness. And it's that place that you might ideally like to activate, in fact, just before mediation so that you're very, very balanced. If you go a little bit more relaxed than that and you go into that, just that sort of phase, you know, that sort of phase where you can just be in that sort of light, 
sort of light sleep almost in that daydreamy state, particularly if you're looking at a computer for too long, that can happen. You know, you can, you can think you're, you're actually productive, but you can be just really drifting off. This is what we call the theta state. So for a lot of people, theta is a light sleep. If you're experienced at meditation, you can be in a deep meditation and show a lot of theta waves. And then when we go to sleep at night and we go into that unconscious state, there's no awareness at all. This is what we call delta. This is a deep sleep where there's no conscious awareness. Now, if you go any lower than delta, you're probably not going to come back, so I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> now, however, there is also another brain wave. So those are the four types of rhythms that your brain will uh, activate depending on what you're doing throughout a 24-hour cycle. But there's also another brain wave, and this is called the gamma wave. Now, gamma waves are very powerful, what's called high amplitude waves, very, very fast, high amplitude brain waves. That when you're able to create gamma waves in your brain, they create state, a peak state of consciousness, peak performance, as the athletes would call it, flow or in the zone. Now, gamma waves have got some very, very interesting properties. Now, we all create them, but for most of us, they're very, very weak signals. It would be the equivalent of trying to hear your next door neighbor whisper. You know, the signal's there, the information's there in the other room, but you can't pick it up. That's the equivalent for most of us of a gamma brainwave. But there are many benefits to gamma brainwaves apart from the ones that I've already uh, described, the memory, the recall, the focus, the concentration. One of the main benefits of being able to create gamma brainwaves is to switch off your stress response. That little fight flight center in the emotional brain that's hundreds of thousands, millions of years old in fact, that's still very, very active for us today and I'm sure you see that a lot in mediations with both parties or one party. You know, when things get too emotionally expressive, that little fight flight free center is firing up and you'll see that emotional expression. And of course, as a mediator, you don't want to get caught up into the energy of that and start to, again, get hooked into that story. You need to stay balanced and coherent. So one of the many benefits of gamma waves, one of the big benefits, is it they literally retrain that stress response. They literally turn it off. That's a very, very useful thing to be able to do if you want to perform at your best in, any, you know, in many, many different uh, areas. There's some of the other benefits here. Again, super focused mind. Now, one of the things that we need to understand is that when we are able to create gamma waves, what happens is you get more of your brain cells fire at the same time. And that creates a binding effect. It's what's called neural synchrony, brain cell synchronization. More of your brain fires at the same time, which means more of you can show up. That literally means more potential. And some of the other benefits here, you have better ideas because more of you is awake. That stress center's turned off. You see new opportunities. You get develop more happiness and calmness. As I said, it switches off the emotional brain. You get increased awareness and intuition. And increased awareness is something that we, we all want. You can't have too much much awareness. You know, the more awareness you have of yourself and what's going on, of course, the more influence you have and the better decisions you'll make. Some of the other things that may not be that relevant, hold a desired goal in mind and form a plan of how to achieve it, but certainly improve concentration and focus. So there are many benefits that are useful to all of us in many contexts to be able to activate this gamma state, as it's called. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this. It's a simple technique. This is a technique I've developed and measured uh, various people's different brains over the last two or three years, and it's based on three elements. So the first one is synchronizing the right and left hemisphere of the brain. So let's have a quick look at this. You may be familiar with this type of thing, that the different hemispheres of the brain process the environmental information differently. We process information differently in different hemispheres. So the left, as you can see here, is much more structure, linear, process, analysis, seeing things in parts and the process that you've got to follow. And then the right hemisphere is a completely different unit, if you like. It likes to see things, how do things fit together? What's the synthesis here? What's the relationship here? There's perhaps more emotional centers in the right hemisphere, perhaps. But you tend to see much more intuitive uh, insights uh, activated when the right hemisphere is really alive. Now, what's interesting about these two hemispheres is this, is that as we've grown up on, along our journey, we'll have a dominant hemisphere that we'll rely on. And in the Western world, for most of us, it's that 
Um, it's that uh, left hemisphere, the analysis, the parts, the structure, the logic. We're so used to that, and we can almost forget about that right side. Now, what we want to do, as I said, is synchronize the two so that you bring in all that understanding of synthesis and the relationship, as well as the parts and analysis and process, together. And what's interesting, again, is when we're under stress, we'll have a fallback position. When you start to feel stress and your fight flight center kicks in, you'll have a fallback to the left or to the right. Some say that the left is more of a masculine trait. Some say the right is more of a feminine trait. It is true that the female brain has more emotional centers, so they've got a greater depth and width of emotional expression than the male brain. But either way, what we want is to synchronize those hemispheres, and that's a simple process. I'll show you how to do that. This is a nice quote to see what actually happens. I'll read this to you in case you can't see it. It says, when the brain's hemispheres are phase-locked and work as one, a number of known benefits result, including heightened awareness, that's very useful, improved recall, more self-programming flexibility, and heightened creativity. In short, super learning. So that's what you get from a phase-locked brain, where you're able to get that left and right hemisphere talking to each other and working as one. Now, as I said, then let me just go back a couple of slides here. There's a relaxation protocol, so we need synchronization of the hemispheres. There's a relaxation protocol. And then the third one, which is really the engine and really where the excitement is in this technique, activating the heart's electromagnetic field, which sounds very, very fancy, but there is some really interesting science that's been around now for quite a long time. It's not really mainstream unless you look for it, about the connection between the heart and the brain. And depending on what emotional state we're in, the emotional state will create a certain rhythm, a heart rhythm, and that heart rhythm, heart rhythm will send signals to the brain and depending on the state and the heart rhythm, it'll either send signals again to activate that fight-flight system or to activate your higher centers of the brain, your frontal lobes directly behind your eyebrows, which is what you want switched on as much as possible. So, what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to show you a very, very quick clip. It's about a 45-second clip. I just want to test the sound, first of all. Um, just to give you an indication of what this heart-brain connection actually means, and then we'll put this together. I'll show you how to do this technique, and then we're going to do it just before we go to lunch. It's been the connection from the heart to the brain. Traditionally, we've learned that the brain is in charge of everything, that all the signals come down from the brain, and that the brain is, in fact, the master computer, that its signals come down and influence the heart and the rest of the body, too. The most fascinating thing for me is that the heart which is in my area of expertise, is the mainframe. It sends abundant signals to the brain, which then sends signals all over the body. It sets the tone. And the interaction of the heart with the brain allows higher centers in the brain to function differently. This bit of information, I think, is the most central piece of research to come out of this area. So interestingly, when we are feeling, or perhaps even in the presence of, what we could call a negative emotion, a stressful emotion, anger, upset, resentment, fear, guilt, anxiety. These emotional states, when we are feeling that ourselves are in the presence of that, our heart rhythms, as you can see on this graph, if we were to map the heart beat and the rhythm of that beat, you would see it's like a little jagged earthquake. It's a very, very jagged rhythm. Now, that sends signals up through into the brain and activate, activates the fight-flight center. So we're in stress. Now, when we're in stress, we're in stress. What that does, of course, it shuts off the higher centers of the brain. So that might be why you've perhaps had the experience within a mediation or a difficult, challenging conversation where you suddenly go blank. You know, you, you know the process, you've got the skill, you've got the experience, but it's just not coming out. There's literally a blank. That's because your higher centers, your thinking centers, the, the blood's drawn, drawn away from that into that fight flight center. Now, when we're experiencing a different type of emotion, what we would call a heart-based emotion, so ideally love or kindness, caring, sincerity, appreciation, gratitude, heart-based emotions, we get a totally different heart rhythm. We get a smooth, coherent rhythm. Now, when we're able to access this and get this smooth, coherent rhythm, what that does, it sends signals through 
bypassing the fight flight center straight into the higher centers here, these frontal lobes behind the eyebrows and activates the thinking center, your higher centers. So that's quite useful. Now what's interesting is when we put the synchronization of the right and left hemispheres together, a relaxation protocol with a specific emotion, then we get these gamma waves. And gamma waves, again, have a binding effect on the brain. They create coherency, flow, the zone, states of peak performance, a higher state of awareness. If you can activate this state and then go into a mediation or a conversation in that state, you are fully there as much as you could ever, ever be fully there. You're not thinking about the past, you're not thinking about the future, you're not worried about anything, you're not trying to struggle with your memory. You are fully there, fully present, and you will be able to give the best of you and bring your best skills and experience to the situation. What's very interesting, you may have experienced this yourself, and there's something you may not know, is that you can actually measure the electromagnetic field coming off the heart outside of the body. So this is an actual image of the electromagnetic waves. The pulse created by the heart beat, that beat, creates electrical signals. Of course, the whole system is electrical that we're in, but this, the heart is the strongest electrical generator out of all the organs in the body, and we can measure it outside the body. So that's an actual image being measured outside of the body, and some researchers suggest we can measure this 15 feet outside of the body, and some say a bit further, depending on the sophistication of the instruments. But what's also interesting is this. Depending on your emotional state, the frequency, the field that you are sending out, and I'm not talking about some little mystical new age aura here, I'm talking about very measurable electromagnetic fields, the field that you'll be sending out will change. So if you're feeling those stressful emotions of any type, again, go back to that jagged graph that look like an earthquake, that's what you'll be sending out. And of course, if your clients, your parties are feeling those emotions, you're immersed in that. You know, obviously more physically face to face, you're immersed in that field, which is probably why you also pick up on it as much as you're trying to, you know, remain neutral. And the opposite goes. The more balanced and coherent and open hearted we are, then we send out a very, very different field into the environment they're in. And that's a balanced, harmonious field. Now, the person with the deepest and strongest coherency will lead the others. And coherency means a balance of brain waves, a balance of heart rhythm, and a balanced body. The one with the strongest, most coherent, and coherency really means working in unison, working as one, will control the rest. And several studies have shown just by measuring brain waves that the person that's able to create the most coherent brain wave, whilst other people are in their personal space, those brain waves are also being measured, that that person with the coherent brain wave will lead the others, and the others' brain waves will start to synchronize with the person who's the most coherent. So, what I would like to teach you then now is a very simple technique. It takes about three minutes to do, and we're going to do it, which creates coherency. It switches off your stress response, activates your higher centers of the brain, and creates coherency in your mind and body. If you can do that and take that into a mediation, certainly if you're going to you know, do a, an online and you're looking at a screen, it's very hard to hold concentration on a screen for an hour. You know, It's very easy to lose concentration and drift off and wander off. But the more coherent you are, obviously, the more beneficial it is for you. The more efficient you are, the more effective you are, and probably the better decisions and direction that you'll take things and hopefully get the best result for all. This is actually um, an, uh, an image of, of my brain waves being measured. I'll just give you a quick overview of this. We've got the gamma wave at the bottom here, uh, the beta wave, which is like me now, wide awake, thinking a lot. Alpha wave, nice and relaxed. De uh, theta wave, deeply, deeply relaxed, almost like sleep. This is after 90 seconds of doing the technique. If I had more time, I'd show you the video, but we don't have much time today. So after about 90 seconds of doing the technique, you can see a dominant gamma wave creating coherency through the body. This is the same graph turned upside down, so you can see the dominance of brain waves. So after 90 seconds of doing this technique, which we're going to do now just before lunch, you get a dominant gamma wave, followed by theta, alpha, and me now wide awake, the quietest actually is beta. That's the quietest activity in the brain. Now what you see there, gamma, theta, alpha, if you were to just 
label that, box that, and sell that. That's the optimal brain signature for personal change, for peak performance, and to stop stress. That's the optimal brain signature because your body is deeply relaxed. You're not hyper. Your nervous system is deeply relaxed, but your brain is highly switched on. You're highly awake, you're highly aware, and you're focused. That's the optimal brain signature. And doing this on a day-to-day -day basis, it's a simple three, four, five-minute process. Doing this on a day-to-day -day basis literally retrains the way your brain fires, and it trains it very, very quickly. And again, it's a very, very nice technique to use. Um, my co co coaching work and training work in the city here, you know, we talk about using this before a pitch, before a presentation, before a difficult, important conversation, uh, before you go home at night, just in, you know, before you get in and leave your work behind type of stuff. So there are many applications for this. There's problem solving applications because you can get into a higher state of consciousness to understand problems. It's very effective for a rest and renewal, uh, meditation, a relaxation, a rejuvenation in the, in the afternoon. There are many uh, applications to this. So, this is my book that came out a couple of years ago that explains this, as it says, a new scientific breakthrough in personal change, because it really is. It allows us to change the way the brain fires very, very quickly. If you've got, uh, if you're a quick, a quick reader and want 10 steps to be able to perform at your best, that's my other book. This is built for very, very busy people, particularly in this city. So that's the gamma mindset, and that's the peak performance, and now it's time to do the technique. So it's a simple technique, very, very simple. What I need you to do is put everything in your hands and on your lap on the floor if you'd be so kind. So remember, there are three aspects to this, synchronizing the right and left hemispheres. We do that with the physical posture. I'll show you that first. The relaxation protocol is simple. I'm going to guide you through that. The relaxation protocol focuses on the head, the forehead, the temples, the jaw, and into the neck. You know, we hold a lot of nervous tension here, which we don't even realize and recognize that we are doing. So we just focus on relaxing this and just letting it go. Then once we're in this uh, posture and relaxation protocol, I'm going to guide you through this. I'm going to say to you, OK, now activate a heart-based emotion. Now, for some guys, that might be like, what? What? And some may not. But a heart-based emotion, love, kindness, caring, gratitude, appreciation, sincerity, when you did something nice for somebody, when somebody, somebody did something nice for you, you know, if you've got children, you might think of your children when they were born, or a favorite holiday, or, or your wife, or, you know, your husband, or your marriage, or your divorce, whatever it was, but some heart-based emotion that just opened you and softened you, okay? When you're in that state, I just want you to feel it, just allow it to flow through your body, and we're just going to settle into that. So what will happen is the emotion will come up, and then it'll stay around for a little while, then it'll start to fade, and that's fine. But just allow yourself to just drop into it. So I'm going to quickly show you the posture is like this. You're just going to cross one ankle over the other, and you're going to put one wrist on top of the other. Turn your palms in, and then you're going to interlock your fingers, but just lightly. So there's no tension, it's just a light clasp of the fingers. Now you can either drop that into your lap, or you can roll round and just hold this on your chest. So as I am now, this is what's called, I'll just move because of the microphone, but keep your hands there. This is what's called the whole brain posture. This simple posture was labeled by um, a guy in the 70s called Dr. Paul Dennison that helped children. Uh, improve their learning abilities. So if you think about this, the right hemisphere of the brain activates left motor function and vice versa. The left hemisphere controls right motor function. So by all we're doing, by crossing the midline of the upper body and crossing the midline of the lower body, we are making the right hemisphere send signals to the left and the left hemisphere send signals to the right. So we're making what's called a whole brain state, bringing logic analysis with synthesis and relationship together, okay? So interlock your fingers, roll around or drop into your lap. Now, just before we go into this, now think about something that you know that when you think about that thing, it will create a heart-based emotion. I'm gonna stand up, just stay as you are. Think about something that when you go into this technique now, Whatever you think about creates that heart-based emotion. 
I always think of my little dog, I had a Welsh Springer Spaniel from the age of 7 to 22. And every time I think of that little dog, it just softens me and opens my heart. And again, so whatever it is for you, everybody got something? Mm -hmm. Good. All right, so close your eyes. Now I'm just going to guide you through a relaxation protocol. Relax your head. Relax your forehead. Relax your temples. Relax your jaw. Just relax. Just let it go. Just enjoy that relaxation. Just enjoy that relaxation. Allow yourself to relax. Allow that left brain analysis, logic, what the hell's going on, what are we doing, to switch off. And that, allow the analysis to stop. And just allow your whole brain to come together and just enjoy the relaxation. And now just think about whatever you need to think about to activate that heart-based emotion. And just allow yourself to feel that throughout the whole body. Allow yourself to feel that throughout the whole body, knowing that you are now sending signals to the higher centers of the brain. And just with a little bit of practice, 60 to 90 seconds of really amplifying this emotion in this posture, you start to create gamma waves and you're retraining the way your brain fires. You're telling the stress center it's not required, it's not needed. Just amplify that feeling. Amplify that feeling and sit with it now for 30 seconds and just enjoy this relaxation and rejuvenation that it creates within the body. And take a deep breath in. And in your own time, just uncross your arms, uncross your legs and just stay relaxed. Open your eyes when you're ready. So that is what's called the gamma brain technique. Very simple technique to do. The effects and benefits of that technique done on a regular basis are vast. They are huge. It would be interesting for you what you find if you do that technique every day for about the length of time we did it, three, four minutes a day, over a 30-day period. What happens is your baseline emotional state raises. And that's an indication that what's happening in here is that Every time we're perceiving an event in the environment and perceiving ourselves, perceiving situations, we're having a different pattern of firing in the brain. And we've got less fight flight system firing, and we've got more, more higher centers firing. And for anybody that wants to perform at the best in any area, we all need to do that. If you were to pick one thing that you could do for changing the way things work inside, it would be the amount of firing your stress center does, the amount of firing your higher centers do. So over a 30-day period doing that, three, four minutes a day, you'll find that baseline state raises and you'll be more calm, you'll be more neutral, you'll be more joyful, so forth and so on. So doing this perhaps just before a mediation, but really activating that feeling, really awakening these higher centers of the brain, creates many, many benefits, allowing you to bring all your skill, experience, neutrality to the table to create the best outcome for all. I hope this has been useful. It's been just a snippet of time to fit this in in 15 minutes and enjoy your lunch. Thank you very much. <laughs>